Now speaking, Sean Leary, Head of Investor Relations. Good morning and thank you for joining Ally Financial's second quarter 2023 earnings call. Our CEO, Jeff Brown, and our corporate treasurer, Brad Brown, will review Ally's results before taking questions. CFO Russ Hutchinson has also joined us for today's call. We are pleased to report that Ally's second quarter performance was strong, with net income of $1.2 billion, up from $1.1 billion in the prior quarter. Our core metrics, which exclude certain items, were also strong, with net income of $1.3 billion, up from $1.2 billion in the prior quarter. We achieved a return on average tangible common equity of 17.7%, up from 16.9% in the prior quarter. We also generated strong. Now speaking, Jeff Brown, Chief Executive Officer. Good morning everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'd like to take a moment to officially welcome our new CFO, Russ Hutchinson, to Ally. Russ has been a trusted advisor to me for nearly 15 years and is a great addition to our team. He brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to the investment community. Now speaking, Russ Hutchinson, Chief Financial Officer. I'm thrilled to be joining the company now at Ally's day-to-day as a particularly rich set of opportunities across its auto finance and Ally bank businesses. Now speaking, Jeff Brown, Chief Executive Officer. Thank you. Our quarterly earnings demonstrate our ability to execute in a dynamic operating environment. Adjusted EPS of $0.96, cents, core rotes of 14%, and revenues of $2.1 billion. Net interest margin of 3.4% was generally in line with our expectations despite the impacts of rapidly rising short-term interest rates. We hold a conservative liquidity posture anchored by our leading deposits franchise. Retail deposits were up nearly $0.5 billion and insured balances increased $1.3 billion in the quarter. Total available liquidity of $42.5 billion is equivalent to 3.8 times our uninsured deposit balances. Set 1 ended the quarter at 9.3% and exceeds our regulatory minimum by $3.7 billion. Operational performance in the quarter was steady across the company. Auto finance generated $10.4 billion of originations at attractive risk-adjusted returns. Net charge-offs in the quarter were 132 basis points, which was down from prior quarter but was slightly elevated relative to expectations. Insurance written premiums were up 14% year-over-year. Ally Bank total deposits of $154 billion are up $13.9 billion year-over-year. Corporate finance nearly 100% of the $10.1 billion portfolio is in a first lean position. Our culture remains a top priority and we remain in the top 10% of global companies and 8 points higher than the financial services benchmark. Customer obsession has resulted in satisfaction scores of nearly 90% and customer retention of 96%. We recently announced nearly $1 billion in giving and lending support for affordable housing initiatives. We are navigating periods of uncertainty and have refined our buy box to eliminate underperforming segments and add significant price particularly in riskier segments. We expect retail auto NCOs of 1.8% for the full year. We are preparing for increased capital and liquidity across the industry and maintain constructive working relationships with the regulatory community. Our market-leading consumer deposit franchise is approaching 3 million retail deposit customers. We have multiple sources of liquidity beyond deposits and total available liquidity of $42.5 million is equivalent to 3.8 times our uninsured deposit balances. Now speaking, Brad Brown, Corporate Treasurer. We expect to see a seasonal increase in lease terminations in the back half of 2023, but we remain confident in our ability to manage this portfolio given our disciplined approach to underwriting and capital allocation. Turning to slide 20. We continue to make progress on our strategic initiatives. We recently announced the launch of Ally Home, which will provide customers with a comprehensive suite of home lending products. We are leveraging our existing infrastructure and customer base to drive growth in this segment. We also announced the launch of Ally Invest Cash Management, which provides customers with a competitive yield and access to a suite of digital banking products. We are excited about the potential of this product and the opportunity to deepen relationships with our customers. We also announced the launch of Ally Assist, which is a suite of digital tools designed to help customers manage their finances. This is an important step in our journey to become a full-service financial services provider. Finally, we are making progress on our technology investments, including the launch of our new digital banking platform, which will provide customers with a more intuitive and seamless experience. We are also making progress on our data and analytics capabilities, which will enable us to better serve our customers and drive growth. You are leading your company's quarterly earnings call and you are tasked with summarizing the company's statement. Net financing revenue, excluding OID, was down year-over-year due to higher funding costs, partially offset by higher earning asset yields. Adjusted other revenue increased year-over-year and quarter-over-quarter. Provision expense was down quarter-over-quarter due to seasonal trends and a modest reserve build. 
non-interest expense was up due to higher weather losses and disciplined investments across technology and variable servicing and collection costs. Gap and adjusted EPS for the quarter were $0.99 cents and $0.96, cents, respectively. Net interest margin, excluding OID, was generally in line with expectations, down 13 basis points quarter over quarter. Cost of funds increased 45 basis points quarter over quarter and 273 basis points year over year. Set 1 ratio increased quarter over quarter to 9.3%. Consolidated net charge-offs of 116 basis points were down quarter over quarter. Retail auto net charge-offs 132 basis points were down versus the prior quarter. 30-day delinquencies increased 36 basis points quarter over quarter. Consolidated coverage declined 2 basis points to 2.72%. Retail auto coverage increased 2 basis points to 3.62%. Retail deposits increased 486 million quarter over quarter and 7.8 billion year over year. Ally Invest complements the deposit franchise well as 85% of new accounts were from existing customers. Ally Credit Card added 49,000 new cardholders in the quarter. Pre-tax income of 501 million reflected pricing momentum along that higher provision expense. Used vehicle values are forecasted to decline 12% across the back half of 2023. Ally Home, Ally Invest Cash Management, and Ally Assist were recently launched. Progress is being made on technology investments and data and analytics capabilities. In summary, the company reported net financing revenue, excluding OID, of $1.6 billion, down year over year due to higher funding costs, partially offset by higher earning asset yields. Adjusted other revenue of $481 million increased year over year and quarter over quarter. Provision expense of $427 million was down quarter over quarter due to seasonal trends in a modest reserve build. Non-interest expense of $1.2 billion was up due to higher weather losses and disciplined investments across technology and variable servicing and collection costs. Gap and adjusted EPS for the quarter were $0.99 and $0.96, respectively. Net interest margin, excluding OID, was generally in line with expectations, down 13 basis points quarter over quarter. Cost of funds increased 45 basis points quarter over quarter and 273 basis points year over year. Set 1 ratio increased quarter over quarter to 9.3%. Consolidated net charge-offs of 116 basis points were down quarter over quarter. Retail auto net charge-offs 132 basis points were down versus the prior quarter. 30-day delinquencies increased 36 basis points quarter over quarter. Consolidated coverage declined 2 basis points to 2.72%. Retail auto coverage increased 2 basis points to 3.62%. Retail deposits increased 486 million quarter over quarter and 7.8 billion year over year. Ally Invest complements the deposit franchise well as 85% of new accounts were from existing customers. Ally Credit Card added 49,000 new cardholders in the quarter. Pre-tax income of 501 million reflected pricing momentum along that higher provision expense. Used vehicle values are forecasted to decline 12% across the back half of 2023. Ally Home, Ally Invest Cash Management, and Ally Assist were recently launched. Progress is being made on technology investments and data and analytics capabilities. Now speaking, Jeff Brown, Chief Executive Officer. Our strategic priorities remain focused on ensuring strong alignment between our culture and stakeholders, highlighting differentiated offerings for both consumer and commercial customers disrupting the industry and removing friction for customers with leading digital experiences, and maintaining a disciplined approach to risk management and capital allocation. We are proud to have Brad lead our company and are confident that these priorities will help us deliver value for all stakeholders. Brad has done an exceptional job serving as interim CFO and corporate treasurer over the past nine months, seamlessly expanding his responsibility to lead the entire finance organization and continuing to excel in everything they do. Keith, Bruett and Woods analyst Sanjay Sakrani inquired, could you provide an update on the timeline for NIM migration and the impact of going up market on yield and provisions? Brad Brown replied, good morning, Sanjay. The two biggest drivers of our trajectory are the retail auto portfolio yield and cost of funds pressure due to volatility in short-term rates. We've been able to pass through risk-adjusted returns at historical highs, while maintaining expected loss content. On the cost of funds side, competition for deposits has been intense, with banks and alternative investments offering attractive rates. Despite this, we've seen record customer growth in the first half of the year, with high retention and engagement. We've also grown balances without lagging the top five payers on good products. Once the peak in Fed funds pauses, we expect to see margin expansion a quarter or two later, which will be a primary driver of long-term profitability in 2024. Keith, Bruett and Woods analyst Sanjay Sakrani inquired, what is the reserve coverage outlook going forward given the higher losses and positive delinquency trends? 
Brad Brown replied, We saw an increase in delinquencies in the second quarter, which was less than expected. This is due to persistent inflation and higher demand for financial obligations. We anticipate a 1.8% full-year 2023 coverage for retail auto, which is supported by our 12-month reasonable and supportable forecast and historical means. Morgan Stanley analyst Jeff Adelson inquired, Could you please provide more clarity on your NIM trajectory and how you plan to offset deposit funding costs in a higher for longer rate environment? Brad Brown replied, Jeff, from a deposit pricing perspective, we are currently at 4%. We anticipate the Fed will hike rates next week, which is factored into our guidance. We are also facing intense competition and continued pressure on rates. We expect our portfolio yield to migrate toward the liquid rates we are paying. To mitigate near-term pressure, we are converting or swapping fixed assets to floating, which has provided us with the benefit of approximately $200 million in need this quarter and will help sculpt our NIM until early 2024. This is embedded in our longer-term NIM view. Jeff Brown replied, I believe we will see a trough in NIM later this year. As Brad mentioned, after the Fed is done, we should start to see rapid margin expansion. If there are any further rate cuts, that will accelerate the process. Your timing around the bottom appears to be accurate. Morgan Stanley analyst Jeff Adelson inquired, what is the updated outlook for 2024 credit losses relative to the 1.6% target? Brad Brown replied, in response to expectations around auto NCO, we guided up to the 1.8% higher end of the range for this year. We've seen a slowing in delinquencies and net charge-off trajectory, which is factored into our guidance. The earlier vintages have had an impact on elevated delinquencies and charge-offs, and those will continue to peak in 2024. Despite this, risk-adjusted returns remain higher than ever due to our underwriting actions and investments in servicing and collections. We feel well-positioned to navigate the rest of this year and into 2024, given the macro backdrop. Jeff Brown replied, The competitive environment for us right now is very favorable. Many players have decided to exit auto lending, creating a rich opportunity for us. Chase's originations were up 30% quarter over quarter, indicating that the market is still attractive with aggressive returns. We recognize credit may be bumpier than expected, but our rows are at lifetime highs. We need scale to succeed, and for those who remain committed, it's a great market. Goldman Sachs analyst Ryan Nash inquired, can you discuss the drivers of the step-down in expenses and potential for slower earning asset growth in the coming quarters? Jeff Brown replied, Ryan, you're right on the money. The first half of the year saw a higher rate of spending than what we anticipate for the second half. Our leadership team has taken steps to reduce costs, including a pause on hiring, with the exception of new interns and one-off positions. This should bring us back in line with our expense guide. Looking ahead to 2024, we'll be taking a different approach to expenses, while still investing in areas like technology and brand. We'll also be mindful of uncontrollable factors, such as FDIC regulations. All in all, we expect a much different expense trajectory going forward. Goldman Sachs analyst Ryan Nash inquired, Brad, what strategies are you considering to optimize the balance sheet and return capital to your targeted levels? Jeff Brown replied, I think our point is that even with a full phase-in of the new regulations, we're already at the regulatory minimum. We've chosen AFS for a reason, and it presents some volatility and pressure, but it also gives us more flexibility. Our terrace ratio is competitive relative to others, and we're managing capital appropriately. We've announced a dividend and are in no buyback mode for now, but we're looking at optimizing certain assets on the balance sheet. We feel good about our capital levels and expect to gradually get to our 9% baseline target, depending on the timing and pace of regulatory clarity. City analyst Aaron Siganovich inquired, could you provide an update on the health of the auto market and how the mix of new and used vehicles could change in the next couple of years? Jeff Brown replied, overall, the market is still very supply constrained and inventories have only seen a gradual uptick. Dealer health is still good, but there have been a few charge-offs recently. The larger dealers we work with are still seeing strong profitability, consumer demand, and results. Carvana's recent restructuring announcement shows good earnings trends. Overall, the industry is healthy and supportive for our business. Brad Brown replied, our balance sheet is strong, with auto assets of $115 billion. We have made some adjustments to our commercial and retail auto balances, but we don't anticipate any major changes in the near future. We are confident that we can continue to support our customers while also being mindful of our capital allocation. City analyst Aaron Siganovich inquired, what is the credit quality of customers in your growing credit card book? Brad Brown replied, I believe the average FICO score for retail auto and credit card customers is around 700. We entered the credit card market in December 2021 to expand and deepen relationships with our 11 million plus customers. We are mindful of the unsecured risk and the nature of the book, as well as our capital allocation in an uncertain backdrop, so we are being careful and disciplined. JP Morgan Chase and company analyst Rick Shane 
inquired, Russ, given the outlook for used car prices, do you expect to see an increase in loss frequency due to strategic defaults? Brad Brown replied, Rick, I'd say overall, our flow to loss is stable and favorable compared to pre-pandemic levels. We expect a 12% decline in used vehicle values for the second half of the year, which will factor into our NCO rate of 1.8% for the full year. Sean Leary replied, Thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time and interest in our company. That concludes today's call. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to Investor Relations. Thank you again.